Welcome to another installment of Chip Amp Theater. Hey guys, I have another chip to take a look at today. It's the NEC UPC 1238. It's one of those 5 pin TO220 style audio amplifier ICs. And I do believe it's long out of production. I believe the chips like the TDA 2030A, 2040, 2050, and LM1875 have pretty much made this one obsolete. This is, a, I believe, a much older chip. Don't know when it actually went into production, but I do know they were used in the low-cost Radio Shack receiver. You know, they sold a little black receiver, often paired it with their minimum minimum seven speakers, and it was, you know, it's a real small receiver, rated like five watts per channel. And in fact, that's what this came out of. So, going to do the usual. We'll uh, do a sound check. Um, power test and all that good stuff. Take a look at the data sheet. See what this thing's all about. Well, here is the data sheet. It's called a uh, 10 watt AF power amplifier. AF being audio frequency. And there are some of the specs. These are output numbers at 1% distortion. 8.4, 8 ohms, and 12.6 at 4 ohms. These, of course, are 1 kilohertz probably. 2 watts, 8 ohm, and 4 ohm. Pretty low distortion. And there's more figures. Here is the schematic. They're also showing a bunch of test equipment. It's kind of like the test setup. But if you just ignore those meter symbols and things, it's your pretty typical uh, five pin chip amp like uh, you know, like the LM 1875, TDA 2050, things like that. Uh, here's the distortion coming up. This is not quite what I would call hi-fi. It doesn't meet my criteria of having less than 0.1% distortion across the frequency band and across its power band. You see at 8 ohm loads it comes pretty close. Here's 0.1. But as the power increases it jumps above that. I mean it's so low you probably could never tell the difference. At 4 ohms it's course going to be a little bit worse but still it's you know it's well below one of course when it starts to clip it's going to start shooting vertical here's the frequency band distortion figures and again it's not real great it's showing at four watts in what is that, 0.1 watt? Yeah. And uh, it does spend a, you know, a lot of its output above the 0.1, going as high as 0.5. So, why not terrible? It's not what I would consider hi fi. Well, let's move on and take a look at the chip on the board and give a listening test. Okay, this is a circuit. It's really just the same as the TDA 2050 and LM1875. I'm not using the exact same values as the data sheet, but I don't think you really have to. Ignore this stuff over here, that's a different circuit. But uh, all I have to do is plug this in like that. Put on a heat sink and we'll fire it up. Okay, I have it hooked up to a heat sink. 
The heat sink is courtesy of some crappy sound design stereo, one of those plastic fantastic ones. Though I must give them credit, they did use a pretty good size heat sink for its 3 or 4 watt per channel amplifier. Power supply, and I'm the I'm on the Variac here because uh, this might exceed its uh, maximum voltage, so I have to uh, turn it down just a bit. And of course, hooked up to the speaker here, I have the two channels bridged together here for four ohms, since this is only a single channel amplifier. And I'll play you a quick little tune. Well, like usual, it sounds just fine. I don't hear any distortion or any problems. I did try to set up this board, keeping my power grounds over here and my signal grounds over here. And of course, I always stress many times how important that is to get the lowest possible distortion out of your amplifiers and having no oscillation or other problems like that. Okay, like always, I have the 8 ohm load connected. Scope right across the load. Have to say that each time because I can't assume everyone has watched all my other videos. I set the power supply voltage at plus 12 and minus 12. In other words, 24 volts across the supply. It does say on the data sheet plus and minus 13, but I think. Um, using a battery voltage. Now these are nominally 12.6 volts, but with some load on them and after a bit of use, the voltage does drop down to about 12, so that's a good voltage to use, I think. Okay, so I'll adjust this to just before clipping, like always, maximum clean power. The blue waveform is the spectrum analyzer. And you see as you clip, you get those harmonic spikes starting to show up. So we'll turn that down so those just go away. And that'll be the point at just before clipping. And we'll use that. 6.68 volts. Six point six eight squared divided by the load impedance of eight ohms. And it gives a lovely five point five seven about five point six watts. Okay, do the four ohm loads next. Four ohm load. And uh I I already took the measurement. I said it was 5.15 squared divided by 4. And we're getting 6.6 .6 watts. Hmm. Seems quite disappointing. I would expect to get a lot more output power. Very strange. Well, I think it's clipping asymmetrically. It starts clipping on the bottom rail first. You can see that not allowing me to get as high as reading as I could. Let me plug in another chip and see what happens. Okay, I put in an LM1875 and uh, took the measurements already. I'm getting nearly 10 and a half watts. You know, everything the same. Same supply voltage. So, for some reason, this amp with forum loads, it just doesn't quite match up. Not getting the output power, I think it should. It could be something with this board, but, you know, putting the other amp in there, other chip, and checking it out. This is just not holding up under forum loads as well. Well, if you have an old device that has that chip, like that Radio Shack receiver, I would be uh, 
thinking about upgrading the chips. You now they're pretty much a drop-in replacement. You know, same pin output configuration and pretty much the same components so it wouldn't be much of an issue and I think you'd get a lot better performance. The LM1875 which is right now my favorite chip amp of all you know, has a hi-fi distortion specs you know, much better than this one as we just looked at its data sheet and uh, I, I kind of talked about the LM1875 chip when I did its review so yeah, um, if you have one of these old amplifier ICs, I kind of think this predates the other ones, as I mentioned earlier. I don't, I don't know when it came out, but uh, I do think it's quite a bit older. Well, there you have it, another chip amp test and review. Thanks for watching.